So I decided to go back to 2010 and check out a movie called Rubber that I hadn't seen since then about a killer tire. Is the movie any good? Let's talk about it. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about 2010's Rubber. And I'd like to start this off by welcoming all of you guys here to the channel once again. If you're new here, my name is Anthony A. Perez and I talk about all things movies, TV, Star Wars, and just movie stuff in general here on the channel or whatever else I want to do. And in today's video, I'm very happy to be joined by my buddy David from his channel, Interpreting the Stars. We're going to be hearing his thoughts on this movie in just a little moment. But a big thanks to you guys for watching as usual. And you guys can find the link to my guest down below in the description box. Go give him some love. Let him know I sent you. But for now, let's get into my thoughts on 2010's Rubber, directed by Quentin Dupont. Dupont, I don't know how exactly how to pronounce his last name. He is a French director, from what I understand, and uh, I have seen a couple interviews trying to find out how people pronounce his name, and I saw a couple people butcher it. I saw some people get kind of close to it, and honestly, I don't really know how to pronounce his name. But yeah. Rubber is an incredibly unique film. This movie literally opens up with a really strange sequence where we have this sheriff literally telling us straight to the audience, straight to the camera, that everything that's gonna happen in this movie happens for no reason. He goes on to give a bunch of examples about different things in different movies or in real life that have happened with really no reason behind them. He pretty much sets up the fact that this film that we're about to watch is based solely on the premise of no reason. And so right out of the gate, it's hard to critique this film like any other kind of film because it's not trying to tell any sort of narrative with a three-act structure with characters that you can care for. Ultimately, this is very much a gimmicky kind of film. The idea is to follow this tire over the course of the film and have this tire be our main character as it discovers the world, discovers its abilities, comes across various uh, creatures and humans, and later on discovers that it has psychokinetic abilities and uses those abilities to blow people up or creatures in the case of rats rabbits or birds in this film and yeah that's pretty much what this film is all about outside of that on the human side of things we have a random assortment of humans that are part of the narrative of what's happening with the tire but the movie does not take any of them seriously and there's literally a portion in the film where the same sheriff character from earlier in the film is literally just getting shot in the chest and asking people to shoot him in the chest just to prove the point that nothing that's happening is real there's a whole segment of the film where he's going around telling everybody none of this is real nothing can happen you can be hurt you can be shot and you will be completely and utterly okay outside of that we have a group of humans that are watching from a distance with binoculars and they're supposed to be the audience they're the only ones that are making comments about what's happening with the tire and the various humans that are part of the story and they're just sitting back and watching this whole thing unfold and that's the basic gist of this whole movie. You have a group of individuals with binoculars from far off in the distance uh, that are playing the audience, that have binoculars that are just watching this whole situation. And then outside of that, you have the tire going around and killing various creatures, animals, and people that it encounters. And then there's other random humans that encounter this tire. That is the whole movie. And you may be thinking, why in the hell would you want to watch this movie? By the way, I watched it on Tubi for free with ads. Uh, but yeah, why did I want to watch this movie again? Well, quite frankly, it's because of just how bizarre it is. I recently reviewed the movie Greasy Strangler, which definitely has a little bit more of a narrative than this one, even though they're both pretty much aimless films. But yeah, you know, I wanted to go ahead and check out another really bizarre, over-the-top, silly film. And so I decided to go back to 2010's Rubber, a film that I remember seeing back when it first came out when there was that hype around it. But I mean, it's been such a long time since then it's been over 10 years since i've seen this movie and going back and revisiting it quite frankly a lot of this felt new to me it wasn't a film that ever really stuck with me and the main reason for that is that i find the film to be pretty boring after a while my general thoughts on this movie would be that it's a silly gimmicky premise that it's hard to critique it's not necessarily a bad movie but it's in no way a good movie and the worst thing a film can be for me is boring and after a while after about 20 30 minutes of this film i found myself bored now i do have some more positives and negatives to talk about in regards to this movie but before we get into all of that let's go ahead and hear what my buddy david from interpreting the stars had to say about this one
What's up guys? I'm Dave from Interpreting the Stars, back on Anthony's channel to discuss a film that before today I only saw once, seven years ago, and I still to this day remember how strange it was the first time around. It's Rubber. Rubber is essentially a film about a killer tire that has psychokinetic powers and the ability to blow things up with its mind, including people's heads. In the distance, a number of spectators watch everything unfold as if it were a movie, which is what they were told it was. If you're wondering what the point of it all is, keep wondering because the point of the movie is that there is no point. First of all, thank you once again to Anthony for inviting me back onto your channel to discuss this film. As soon as you said Rubber, Memories flooded my brain seven years ago, and I was like, oh god, that movie, but I was still too curious not to watch it again, so here we are. So this movie is so obscure that I had to go back to my initial review back in 2014, in which I said Rubber is the weirdest film that I'd ever seen because it set forth a goal to be just that weird. But how I felt about the film back then remains true today, which is that, in a strange way, you know, I still like it. The movie begins with basically the only explanation or exposition that's necessary. That most of what you're going to see in the movie is filled with something that they call no reason. That the greatest films in history are filled with it. Why is the alien in E.T. Brown? No reason. Why was JFK shot? Well, in the movie JFK, him getting shot was just something that happened, so, you know, no reason. Why don't we ever see people go to the bathroom or wash their hands in film? Again, you know, no reason. And this movie simply wanted to make an entire movie filled with that. So, a living tire that rolls around and kills people. Why? Again, no reason. Spectators that are all outside on a hill with binoculars acting like the whole thing is a film. Why? No reason. Psychokinetic powers. Why? No reason. It is funny in a way because it's basically a parody of plot holes in a film. And you can't help but laugh at the ridiculousness of the thing. But when you have a film filled with no reason, sometimes you kind of dig yourself into a little bit of a hole because there's actually some fantastic, and I really do mean fantastic, potential in this movie that could make you think if given the chance. There's these hints throughout the film that some characters are in on some kind of elaborate joke, that they know that they're in a movie while others don't, kind of like in The Truman Show. So they can't get hurt, for instance, because in their perspective, everything is fake. You know, there's props, there's makeup, there's all this stuff in a movie. It's like they're on the set of Rubber the Movie. But there's also the argument to be made that it's not all fake. That it's not all a movie. It's not all just props and effects. But an aspect of the film has been conjured into existence. But because the film is filled with no reason, it's glossed over and ignored. And I thought that was actually kind of some missed potential. It's really hard to explain because you kind of have to see the movie for yourself to completely understand, I can only explain so much. Also, because I have a very specific way of rating film, Rubber is just one of these movies that my rating method doesn't really work for it that well. There is no narrative. I mean, not really. It's just this tire rolling around killing people for no reason. But at the same time, they did make the movie that they wanted to make. They succeeded in telling a story where without saying a word, you can sense the things a freaking tire is thinking. You can witness its growth as a nothing character that slowly begins to realize what it is, what it can do, and how much it likes to hurt and break things and people. You see firsthand its struggle to break a bottle of beer by rolling over it, so these struggles transform into that ability to psychokinetically blow it up. And then it continues to utilize this newfound power to kill other animals and people and things like that. And as weird as that sounds, a lot of that was you know, kind of smart character development. Past that, almost everything in the film is created with practical effects, including the way that they were able to remotely control this tire rolling around like it's BB-8. If you think about it, a lot of that is actually, honestly, kind of impressive. The practical effects of the things that blow up in the movie, also subtly, great work. So I do have to give it props when looking over my unbiased score. So even though the movie is undoubtedly weird and purposefully pointless in its narrative, 
my unbiased score isn't terrible. You know, it could be better, no doubt, but this score is 62%. My bias score, or how I felt about the film in general, is a little bit higher because in general, it's self-aware wackiness was honestly a lot of fun. You laugh, you get shocked, you shake your head in dismay. It's an experience. But at the same time, because there is no narrative, it feels like it's also going nowhere. That this movie can keep going on and on and on for hours because there is no real end goal here. And because there's no end goal, there's not really any kind of obstacles for our characters. And because of that, it felt longer than it needed to film, which is bad news bears because the entire movie is only about an hour and 20 minutes long, which is nothing in terms of runtime in film. So even though I did enjoy it, I realized that it could have been better. So this bias score is 76%. And when we average out the two scores together, we come to final rating of 69%. 69 out of 100 possible stars or a C plus letter grade on my updated grading system. Thanks again to Anthony for reaching out to me to watch this movie. It's bonkers. It's ridiculous. It's pointless, but it knows exactly what it is and what it's doing. And I have to give it props for that. Anyways, I'll hand it back to Anthony to finish out his thoughts on Rubba. What you got, man? A big thanks to David for being here in this video. Always love hearing your thoughts, man. Always a pleasure to have you here on the channel. And I knew I wanted to have you here for this movie simply because you have this very analytical style to the way that you choose to review films and you have that technical non-bias score and that bias score. And so I was very curious to see how you were gonna feel about this movie revisiting it today. And ultimately, I think you enjoyed it maybe a little bit more than me, but I think we pretty much still had the same general idea and feel about this movie. It's a film that's hard to critique because like you said, in a lot of ways it is well made it's well shot it's got an interesting score that works for the film and it uses that score and the way that it's shot a lot of times to kind of tell the journey of this tire the tire isn't speaking at all throughout the course of the film but just in the way that it moves the way that it kind of sees things the way that it's kind of attracted to something that may move past it and it's kind of journey discovering its abilities and coming across anything like a water bottle or, or a glass bottle over the course of the film and kind of starting to uncover things about itself the movie does a good job of characterizing this tire simply based on the score and the way that it's shot. There's some really interesting cinematography in this film. Again, I enjoyed the score, and there's actually a pretty good use of practical effects for these kills, as David has just mentioned. There's actually quite a bit of gore in this film, and when it's used, it's used subtly, but it's all practical it's on screen and so that's definitely something i definitely enjoyed about the film was you have that practical element you have the filmmaking element that you can definitely tell creative people put time and effort into making this movie and so ultimately i had a good time watching it on that level but about 30 minutes or so into the movie genuinely i, I just found myself bored i wasn't crazy about what was happening of course the movie's whole premise is based on no reason so anytime you see anything that happens in the movie that you may question ultimately the response you have to give yourself in their head is no, that just happened for no reason. Even a really small moment, like a guy pumping gas in his car very strangely, just like the way he was holding uh, the gas pump while he's pumping his gas. It's so strange, and I had a little quick moment in my head where I was like, why is he pumping his gas like that? And I went, of course. There's no reason. And ultimately, that's how this whole film is, whether it's the humans, whether it's the tire, whether it's the premise, whatever the case may be, everything about this film is really hinging on the whole idea of no reason and so it's hard to really critique this film again and give it a, a score that says oh this is a bad film ultimately i do find it to be boring i think this is a comedy sketch for something like youtube that goes on way too long but i do appreciate the commitment to the fact that this is a feature-length film i think if you're a cinephile if you're a big movie fan and you have never seen this before it's definitely worth at least one watch to just to say that you've seen it and that you can be part of that discussion but as a movie with characters and story and, and things that you can really latch on to it's just not present so after a while the film did bore me it's not a film i can necessarily recommend flat out but it's also not a film that i can call bad because i think for what it is it's so objective in what it wants to do it's so purposeful in everything that is being sought out to be made with this film that you can't help but realize this is what they were going for they succeeded in it so it, can you really call it a bad film so that's where I'm going to wrap up my thoughts on Rubber. Definitely want to hear what you guys have to say about Rubber. Do you like this movie? Do you not like this movie? Do you think it's a kind of a dumb gimmicky movie? Or do you think there's some sort of creative artistry to this movie? Definitely can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. Please hit that like button, comment your thoughts, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys for the next one. As usual, you can find the link to my guest down below in the description box. Go give David some love. His channel is called Interpreting the Stars. And again, you can find the link to that down below in the description box. I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Bye-bye.